one revolution. Look, Marquardt's on standby. Log online. Sam page loaded and ready. Player stats loaded. Health check. Go. Weapons check. Ice check. Complete. We have launch for the informant podcast in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Informant Podcast. I'm Pistol Pete from Spockholm. Tonight I have with me Jenna and Jennifer. What is going on? I'm ready for the weekend. Yeah? I don't know about you, but yeah. Me too. We have right. baseball practice two nights this week, and I am so out of shape. And I was sitting there hitting balls to these kids for like an hour straight. Are you the I, coach? I, I'm like an assistant helper. I'm not even the assistant coach, but I'm like a helper. Well, you so, are the jack of all trades. So I was, I was hitting grounders to him, and then I was trying to hit him to the outfield. My arms were so weak, I couldn't even hit him to the outfield. It was embarrassing. Yeah, but, I guess uh, it's, it's yours. Doesn't yeah, have the, great shape. Does mouse, it? Mouse click finger <laughs> doesn't help me with batting practice. You gotta incorporate uh, crunches into it. Yeah, crunch click, crunch click. I said though, by the end of baseball season, I'll probably be back in shape again if I keep keep doing this every every Monday and Tuesday. It's That's a workout, good. so. That's, nice. that's what we've been busy doing is gearing up for baseball season. I went to the school art show, so that's been my night. Cool. I've been reading. Me too. In in between. Thanks things. to Pistol Pete, who never reads. How ironic. <laughs> He's got us both hooked on the Hunger Games. I read. I have my yeah. moments. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for you, I would have never went to see that movie. And if I didn't see the movie, I wouldn't have bought the books. And, you know, I said on that first show when Pete said he was you going said, to you'll that. You said you'll be there in three days or two I days. I said I would bet money <laughs> that you'll see it within 24 hours, and I think you did. Nobody took my bet. <laughs> that Damn was it. funny. I yeah. know, and you really did. And you were really sure about it on that show. You are like, uh-uh, no way, no way. So you're so I predictable. I went ahead and gone. <laughs> yep. I'm glad I did. I love the movie. I recommend everyone go see it. Mm-hmm. And then it makes you appreciate your own life a little bit more, too. Exactly. What well, should. And it makes you realize that there's so much more than Mafia Wars. <laughs> I'm trying to get back out and do real things now. And I, think we I all used are. to read a lot, and that's one thing I've given up. Uh-huh. And so I've been forcing myself to read more. It's nice. Yeah. I've kind of enjoyed it, too. So. Other than kid books to my son, I hadn't read anything on my own in a while. So I'm enjoying it. Thanks, Pete. Look what you've yeah, done. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> we might quit Mafia Wars now yeah. and become professional readers. Professional readers. <laughs> exactly. We'll start picking apart uh, people's uh, books. Go back and read things like Harry Potter so that you can go back and watch the movies again and go, oh, man, I can't believe they missed that part. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm amazed at how well The Hunger Games follows the book. Yeah, they did say that that was That's one of the That's very games. rare, because yep. usually the books are not much like the movies, like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, I haven't seen that or read it. Uh-huh. Those were good books. I'm not that impressed with the movie, though. But it does unless you read the book first, that movie makes no sense. And I took my parents and my boyfriend, and I played it up that it was going to be so good. And they were confused the whole time. And I decided that was because they didn't read the book. Fail. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it goes. I'm only about halfway through it, so. I'm going to get through all the books, though, before two and three. Oh, yeah, I bought the whole trilogy. Okay. So if I don't blog a whole lot, that's why. <laughs> Take some breaks. Blame Pete. <laughs> Is Although, anything good, even going on? Good part. I mean, no, they have that March Madness, but it has nothing to do with basketball. It's the Mad Hatter. I know. And which would be really cool for Disney fans, but I know I kind of I don't like the, I'm not trying to get it. They made the white rabbit a car. That doesn't make me want to go out and buy it. And then the Mad Hatter, they didn't put the little ten six over it on his hat. Oh yeah, uh, the card. Yeah, you're appalled. Yeah, see now talk about attention to detail. I mean, I knew there was a card up there, but I had no idea. It's a fraction. It has something to do with money. I looked it up on Google once. Ah, okay. Like six pence or something. I forget what it means. I should have looked that up if I knew I was going to talk about it. Sing He's a, a little creepy. Six pence pocket full of rice. He just has that card on his hat. Yeah. So I think in the story, he gets it at a thrift shop or something. I don't know. I'm probably going to be blasted for not knowing this by somebody who does. 
Well, they can school us. <laughs> yeah. How about Someone that? Someone who's in Alice in Wonderland. I get schooled on my blog all the time if I'm not really sure about something and I just say what I think it is without Googling it. Well, nobody said we were experts in I know. anything. I think we're not really supposed to be. No. Like, our talking. job is to kind of gather information from other sources and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Nobody said we came up with everything. I mean, Pete's a little different, but... Yeah, of course. He's, he's an exception. That's how I think of myself. I don't think I pull all this stuff out of my head. No, it's pretty amazing, though, the stuff that you do remember about the game and are able to share, though. Yeah, incredible, Cause really. Because there's things like, heck, I can't even remember what we did yesterday. It's Bacom. <laughs> and she can. She can remember what you like, did oh, yeah. yesterday. You know, you guys did this, 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 and this. Amen. And then... <laughs> And then it's like I'm thinking today, like, you know, all right, what do I talk about today? And I was going to say, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the toolbar. And, you know, in the toolbar, we added these new district tabs. Uh, well, wait a minute. Old news. I already talked about that last show. I'm yes, you did. Yeah. See? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got an interesting brain. I got one you could talk about, though. But I'll wait and see if you pick up on it. Yes. Because <laughs> I forgot what it was already. <laughs> oh, you know what? It isn't something new. It's something I never wrote about but got, finally got around to it. So you probably already have talked about it. What was it? The auto collect and the stop ices. Yeah, oh, right. It's old. Yeah, yeah, I just have never blogged about it. Yeah. And it's funny too because um, I was trying to get the screenshot, so I went ahead and just attacked a bunch of minis, and I didn't think much of it. And I posted the screenshots of it collecting the ices, and um, apparently I left the data for the um, minis that I attacked. And then somebody pointed that out on my blog. Yeah. That I was you were attacking using drones. <laughs> the one thing I will go to mention, because I did say I was talking about the toolbar a little bit, is there's been some complaints of some people having problems with Chrome and it cracked the toolbar crashing in Chrome. And what we found in most cases was that if you clear your cache, it seems to have resolved the issue for those people. So that may be something you want to do. Now, I will recommend that you go in and you make sure you got a backup of your, you know, your histories and things like that, just in case you inadvertently delete your local storage, too. So I would certainly make sure that you've got to use the backup inator or something like that to back up your statistics so you don't lose it because you can always re-import re it again later if you inadvertently do that. But caching seems to be a problem that's getting caused in some cases on Chrome with the toolbar. Other yeah, than that, I, I spend most of my time on Firefox, so I haven't noticed those issues. So, And then um, I know Brandon's still working some bugs out of a uh, an on-frame for the Chrome users that might be a little bit easier, but we're running into some issues with the, um, the code base that... Um, I wanted to say Zynga. That's not true. Code base that Google uses for Chrome doesn't have the same parameters available to it or the same functions available to it that Firefox does um, with Grease Monkey. And that's what's causing some grief why we can't get it to just work the same across both browsers for those that are using, you know, the Grease Monkey script to do the unframing. So I imagine over time he'll figure out a solution to it and. Um, we better... He's challenged. Yeah. And... So he probably will. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yes. So, and when people are frustrated that they can't do the things they've been doing in the game all along, then people get frustrated and necessity yep. dictates invention. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On the last show, we discussed um, the Firefox workaround for unframing because... Zynga deliberately tried to block on framing, mm -hmm. and didn't they do something to interfere with that workaround as well? They did, in fact. They moved their variables within the same script block that the um, the unframing, the challenging code that was preventing us from unframing the game, uh, they moved their, their variables up in there. So when we canceled the script block so that we could unframe the game, they went in and moved it, and then we were canceling variables out. And then what was happening was, you know, the toolbar wasn't loading. You were having other issues happen with, you know, other things. And it was kind of a messy deal. But, I sense a little cat and mouse going on. Yeah, there. you know, and that, that, that's exactly what it felt like. It is. Well, but, uh -huh. you know, that that's kind of always it. Now, you know, I'm, I never know if what they're doing is intentional to try to pr create that cat and, cat and mouse approach or if, it, you know, I know they're dealing with issues, but it, it seems like 
some of the fixes sometimes in my mind and i'm you know i'm only sharing my opinion don't go come down on me and have the zynga gods mad at me or whatever but you know i i i think that they 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 see what they want to see and they don't realize you know that stopping on framing isn't going to stop the scripters it makes people crazy is what i saw you know there's so many people that don't like the jumpiness, the jitteriness, uh -huh. all the things that come with a framed game. The distractions. And, and the distractions, and that's why they unframe. Now, am I going to say that, you know, people only unframe and then play the game manually? No. that It would be ridiculous for me to make that statement, That because I, I know it's not 100% true. Many of the people that use scripts unframe. But in reality, there's a lot of scripts that run in the frame game, too. We're not the only ones that have a toolbar that works in a framed or unframed environment. And from that toolbar, you can load almost every one of the scripts that are available out there. So, you know, it seems somewhat short-sighted. And it seems, to me, almost like a waste of development time. And, and, and I know they've, they've got, you know, people that they're monitoring their time and what they spend and all that. And I don't want to be overly critical of it from that perspective. I mean, they have a job to do, too. And they're doing what they think is right. But it does seem a little bit like a waste sometimes because the scripting community is fast enough to fix, you know, whatever it is they potentially break mm -hmm. to to get us back to where we play, where we feel comfortable. You know, I mean, I mean it's like today, I'm, you know, I have baseball practice, I'm back now, I'm playing the game. I haven't even launched a script since I've been back. I mean, I've done a lot of the things manually. I've gone through my ZMC and believe it or not, I clicked on most of them manually. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, the scripts are, you know, it's guarantee that because I'm unframed and I am unframed that I'm going to be running scripts the minute that the unframing occurs. And that's kind of what it seemed like. That's why they put it in place. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, you know, I, I appreciate and I've said this to them. I've said it to others. I appreciate the dilemma they're in when they've got so many scripts out there and from so many different, ven you know, vendors, if you want to call us that you know, that are, you know, being modified without our permission and then being, you know, asked to do things that we didn't intend, you know, initially intend them to do. You know, when I've talked about it once before, when Brawler came out, it had a timer just like ours did that ran about one to three seconds. You can m turn it down to about one second per request, which is pretty mild in comparison to what they've asked for. But someone else figured out, well, hell, I can just go download, you know, Aaron's script directly and go change some parameters on it and now all of a sudden I can I can be fighting at you know one millisecond per request and even though Zynga can't handle or chooses not to handle those requests at that rate it's load on their servers right you know I still don't I'm still a little baffled too on why we can't isolate those people and those IP addresses that are putting that kind of load on the server either is that, it possible? I mean, well, from what you... I mean, there's databases of of lo and logging that happens in, you know, web servers that you can see activity and you can see repeat activity from IP addresses. And, you know, I believe they have access to that information. I mean, I, you know... I, I would think so. I mean... I can't guarantee it, but, you know, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I never know what, you know, what they do have or don't have, you know... Because that's not something they share with the public, and I don't blame them. And they they may not have all that in place at this point. They may only have portion, you know, portions of it. I don't know. I, you know, I'm just uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna stumble over my words again because I just don't know what what we need to do as a community. You know, and not that we all need to be policing one another to say, oh, so and so is using a script, and now all of a sudden it's gonna turn into 150, you know, tickets submitted to Zynga over the matter. I don't think it needs to be that. But, you know, I just think there's got to be an easier way to identify those people that are really, truly abusing scripts or have something just running amok that, you know, it can be addressed. And they need to take action. I mean, if they're, if they're serious about this, when they catch that type of behavior, they need to do something. Yeah. But then are they going to catch the wrong person who's not really doing anything that bad? Yeah, and I think it's that's a that's a problem. A well, I think that's a problem they're faced with is well, what do you set that threshold at? What is that formula 
you know, we've dealt with this on the Facebook side where, you know, you, you, Facebook has these rules on what they perceive as, you know, spammers, you know, or the number of requests you're sending out for family requests. And all of a sudden you get a block 